So to the believer, as a Christian, as you sit here tonight, if you're a believer, I want you to answer right here. What is hope? What is, what is hope? Well, it's, 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 it's really a, a, a great part of our life as a Christian. We, could, we would probably all answer it differently if we went around the room, but I guarantee you what we said and how we said it would probably be equal, and we would be saying the same thing. But I, I want to simplify tonight what hope is for the believer. And it's, it's what you already probably know that Elijah received from God, but it's the one thing that as we've journeyed through this story and this life of Elijah, it's the one thing he lacked. He was discouraged. He was depressed. So depressed, he, he leaves where God had him and goes and basically barricades himself in a cave, so to speak. What is hope? Well, generally speaking, and, and maybe you've said it today, or you said it yesterday, or maybe you'll probably, you might say it tomorrow, me being included. Everyday vernacular with the word hope deals with this one thing, and that's uncertainty. We may have said, well, I hope Carolina beats Duke. We may say, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I sure hope it's good. I hope Ms. Hilda gets okay. It deals with really uncertainty in everyday vernacular. But to the believer, to the Christian, it deals with one thing and one thing only. It deals with certainty. I'd appreciate an amen. It, it, it means certainty. And that certainty, that hope that we have, I'm not cramming everything about hope under this umbrella, but I want to share with you, it generally uh, deals with, it, we have hope that God has made a promise. He said he was going to send his son. He sent his son. And he said his son's coming back. And, and that's the hope that we have. That's what really should uh, energize, ignite, and excite us every day as a believer, the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we have hope in that. It is, I, I don't know about you, but with me, there's a certainty in my hope that I, that I have that he's going to return. Not only does this hope, uh, this hope should ignite and excite us, in the hope, the hope that we have in the Lord returning, but there's a, it's an ingredient of, it's a, in, the, in, the, in, in hope as a believer, uh, the ingredient is there's a security and there's a satisfaction of, of the hope that we have in our love and service as a Christian, as a believer, as Soldier Bay Baptist Church, as any church. It, it, it goes into our service and our love even those that are even those that, even though that those that are hard to learn because this is the certainty that we have when you're witnessing and when you're sharing your story and when I'm sharing and witnessing and inviting and, and we're all doing that we don't know where that conversation is going to go we don't know uh, we may have something to do tomorrow listen to me we may uh, uh, well, I don't want to go. I don't want to chase that rabbit. I'm, I apologize. W there may be something that we're going to have to deal with as a Christian, dealing dealing with service and love. And we, the hope that we have is the foundation and the thought process that you know what, whatever tomorrow brings. It's not that I hope it's good. It's whatever tomorrow brings and wherever it takes me. I have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I know that God's already gone before me. It's that security. It's that satisfaction. And what we have here, where we're going, or where we're heading uh, for tonight with this story, I wanted to deal with uh, the continue uh, 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 19 through 22, where Elijah does some things. But for tonight, and for us to kind of come to a, to a halt, so to speak, 
we look at verse 15. As you stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word, 1 Kings 19, starting with verse 15, and I'm going to read to verse 18. 15 through 18. If you're there, say amen. The Bible says, And the Lord said to him, This is Elijah. Now Elijah's in the cave, right? Uh, or he's outside the cave. At this time, in verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord said to him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king of Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of abel Mahola. You shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Once again, Lord, I ask you that I decrease, you increase. I cannot stand here without you. Father, anoint this message tonight from you. It's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. We have here, and we find here, Elijah has no hope. In the, in the place that he's at, he has no hope. Jason, how do you know that? I want you to do me a favor, not look at me. I want you to look in your Bible that you brought from home. I want you to look at verse 10 in chapter 19. Look at verse 10. We've read it time and time again, but I want you to look there. God has asked Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? Look at verse 10. So he said, I have been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Don't even look at me. Look over at verse 14. In verse 13, the last sentence is God saying, Elijah, or what are you doing here, Elijah? Now look at verse 14. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Elijah has no hope. How do we know that? Because he has nothing new to say to God. But, oh boy, does God have something new to tell Elijah. And you may get there sometimes where you really don't have nothing new or anything new to tell God. But when we find ourselves disappointed, when we find ourselves discouraged, when we find ourselves depressed, we need to understand and we need to have our hope placed in God that he has a new message for us. He has a new word for us every time. I, 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 want, you to, I want you to ask yourself this question. Let, let's play just a little bit. Listen to the question carefully. Did Elijah have any real reason to abandon God according to Elijah? Yes, he did. Hence the word according to, or the words according to Elijah. Now watch this. Did God have any reason to leave Elijah? Forget everything just for a moment. I'm going to be mean for just a moment, okay? Did God have any reason to abandon Elijah? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now I said that to set me up to say this. Aren't you glad God never abandoned you? Aren't you glad God never leads you? Matter of fact, margin scripture, the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 10, He had not dealt with us. Listen, He has not dealt with us 
according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Aren't you glad God doesn't abandon us, leave us out there in the cave, Casey, leaving us discouraged, leaving us disappointed, and leaving us depressed? He has a new word for us when we get there. Tonight, real quick, we're going to see God's requirement and Elijah's responsibility. God's requirement, Elijah's responsibility. Look at verse 15, please. The Bible says, And the Lord said to him, Go! Return. We need to underline or underscore that if you mark in your Bible. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Return your way. He says, he says, go. And he says, return. This, are, this was a requirement. Hey, for you to receive that new message for me, if you allow me for just a second, for you to receive that new message for me, that new hope from me, you need to listen to what I'm saying. And not only listen to what I'm saying, but do what I'm saying. Because thus saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. Because he said it. And when God gives us instructions, when God gives us commands, we are to follow that for that new message, or for that new message of hope that he's getting ready to give us. Oftentimes, I don't know if you've ever been out of the will of God like I have, and I had a godly father to always remind me when he felt like I was out of the will of God. But if you've ever been out of the will of God and you're trying to get back into the will of God, don't you have to retrace your steps? Don't you have to retrace your steps? Don't you have to go and return? And retrace your steps to where God had you. And that's exactly what God's doing to Elijah. He is sending him back to his place of ministry. He's sending him back to his place of mission. He's sending him back to his place of purpose. That's where he's sending him back to. And uh, uh, my, uh, my uncle, he, he, he used to have a bumper sticker, and I'll never forget as long as I live. When I say it, he's going to go, yeah, I remember that. My uncle used to have a bumper sticker. You've seen them before. You didn't see my uncle's truck probably, but you've seen them. God allows U-turns. God allows U-turns. Aren't you glad tonight God allows U-turns? Huh? Come on now. Aren't you glad he allows U-turns? It's, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's not a secret because the church is going to, to see fruit prayerfully. Uh, yesterday I met with... Um, Yesterday I met with, I've seen if she was up here, but she's probably downstairs. Yesterday I, 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 I scheduled an appointment because, uh, 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 well, maybe, this is going on. No, it's okay. <laughs> but yesterday I met with a couple. I'll just say that for right now. I met with nothing bad. But um, that, I, I, I'm I'm. Con I'm con I'm concerned about them. And, and just so you know, just so you know, I, I'm a chased rabbit. I'm just glad to be here tonight. Just so you know, I want you to understand what you're, what you're, what's, go, what's happening and what's going on. Is it okay if I plug the prayer breakfast? Is that all right? Okay. Let me tell you what's happening and going on. Uh, around 740-ish, uh, we, we come up here. And we're all at the altar, or we're, all at, we're at strategic places that they just want to be at. Before you get here, your pew has been paid for, uh, prayed for. Your pew has been, that's the new church. Uh, your pew has been, I'm just kidding. Your pew has been prayed over from where you're sitting. So, so there's some things we've, uh, we've been doing and we started doing, and it just excites me. And I want the church to know, uh, we're praying for area pastors. We're praying for area churches. We're praying for a revival to come to the community. And, 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 and we're communicating, the church is communicating with the pastor and said, hey, on this day, at this time, you and your church was prayed for. And, and we list and we share with them specifically the areas that we prayed for them and their ministry and their church. And about three weeks ago, I believe it was, about, give or take, about three weeks ago, you know what we've also started praying for? Because this is, this is an area that your pastor is very concerned about, is uh, lost sheep of Soldier Bay. There's, there's people, and I need help. And let me tell you how you can help me. I had not planned to say any of this. Let me tell you how you can help me. Uh, there, there are people, there are members of this church that no longer come to this church. And we're seeking them out. We're seeking them out through prayer. And in our praying, in our praying, 
the men are praying this, and I'm praying this, for them and me to cross paths. Now, before, wait a minute. You say, why don't you, didn't, didn't the shepherd go after the lost sheep? Hold up a minute. And for the family or the person to burden the pastor down and for God to give him the time, the wisdom to call and make an appointment and get in their home and find out where they are. That's what we're praying for here every Sunday morning between 7.30 and 8, let's say. I said all that to say, the young lady that was sitting in my office yesterday. She says, can I get rebaptized?" I said, sure. Because her fiance and her started the new members class this morning. They'll be joining. It's Panky and Kayla. Uh, they'll be getting married soon. But uh, I, I just, uh, my heart was just burdened for them. We got together, we set up an appointment, and we talked. And, and, and he accepted Christ about two to three months ago. Okay? And, and I, I've explained the importance of baptism. I explained the importance of membership and belonging. And uh, yesterday I, I, I felt like... Um, I was just, I uh, give God the glory, but they, they wanted to immediately get plugged in the new members orientation, and they were here this morning, and they'll be here next Sunday, and, and I'll do the second session with them. But she said, can I get rebaptized? I said, well, tell me, tell me your story. And she was baptized around 15 and has been walking at a guilty distance. Guess what she's doing? She's turning, she's going, and she's retracing her steps back to God. Hallelujah. And that's what, that's what God has instructed Elijah to do. We see, hey, have you, ever have you ever wanted a reset button in your life? I'm just asking. Huh? <laughs> uh, control, alt, delete. You know, the three-finger salute to a computer. Huh? Uh, just a, I want to do that over. Elijah needed a reset, and God did it. God did it. But here's the deal. Elijah didn't have anything new to say to God, but Elijah had a new message for, uh, God had a new message for Elijah. But what was Elijah really saying in these two verses that are identical? Here's what he was saying. God says, listen to me now. I, 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 this is, I believe this may be a message from God for somebody here tonight. God says, what are you doing here, Elijah? You know what Elijah should have said? I'm not trying to add to the Bible, delete, take away, or change it. But I want to bring it to common day vernacular with what people, what's really going on in people's lives when they're in the cave, when they're disappointed, depressed, and discouraged. Let me tell you what they're doing. When God says, what are you doing here? Elijah should have said nothing. Nothing. And then when he asked him again, what are you doing here, Elijah? Nothing. Because guess what? You may disagree with me, but I've thought and prayed about this statement before I said it because I knew I wanted to say it tonight. When you're out of the will of God, you're doing nothing for God. Nothing is what he should have said. Elijah's condition of his position is a concern because of his calling. Elijah's position and his condition is a concern because of his calling. Because of his calling. What God had him and wanted him and led him to do. Because of his calling? Yes. I want to give you a news flash tonight. Remember, I love you. I want to give you a news flash tonight. We all have been called. I am not the only one in this room that has been called. We, are y'all okay? Is this thing working? We all have been called. And I want to share with, something with you real quick about your calling. Your calling is not where you get a paycheck. Your calling is not where you're at when you get your paycheck. That's not your calling. Now, you may look at what you do that where you get a paycheck as a calling. But the calling from God 
was when that Holy Spirit spoke to you. And you realized at that moment that you were a sinner in need of a Savior. You were called. We all have a calling. Well, Jason, I understand right now, maybe uh, I've heard a lot, maybe God's speaking to me right now, and I'm just, I've just got a question for you. i just got a question for you. If I'm a Christian and I've been called, what is my calling? It's very simple. Jesus says you need to go and make disciples. Let me, let me do it like this, because you're going to pass out. We're all missionaries. We're all missionaries. Jason, I am not going to Sri Lanka. Hey, God, if God wants you, Mr. Don, when he came back from Sri Lanka, this is what he told me. He said, if God wants you in Sri Lanka, you'll be in Sri Lanka. Can I ask you something? Can I share something with you, pretty please? Out of love and admiration for you, God has called you right where you are. You've been called. And you're, called, you're a missionary called to go and make disciples. I want to ask a question. I'm not being mean. I'm not mad. I want to ask you a question. I want you to imagine. Just, I would be lying if I didn't say it bothers me when attendance is low. This week, Wednesday night, attendance was low. This morning, attendance is low. Awana has suffered uh, tonight in attendance. It's low tonight. We're about average. I've seen it more in here on Sunday night, but I will tell you, I would be lying if I didn't say I was, and I've tried to win, I reckon we just have a bunch of Irish in the church and I didn't know it, okay? But anyway, um, but it, it bothers me, but I want to share something with you real quick. Um, I want you to think for just a moment. Y'all seen it full in here? And full up there? And full back here? I want you to think about this just for a moment. What if everybody at Soldier Bay that attended took their calling as a missionary seriously? I'm not saying you're not taking it serious. Don't mix my words. But I want you to think about that for a moment. What if everybody at Soldier Bay grasped and was obedient at all the opportunities that I do not, I do not get a check mark for all the opportunities that I have during the day. I, I, I probably fail. I probably fail bad. And thank God he doesn't grade on a curve, but he grades on a cross. But listen, what if we all became missionaries? What if we all, what if we all became obedient in the will of God and got that our heart had eyes so we could see the wealth in Jesus Christ and become missionaries once again. Elijah was called to serve. He wasn't serving because there was serving to be done. And what happened to Elijah is what happens to us sometimes. It will, it's what happens to me sometimes. We give up. I didn't say we give out. Y'all ever been give out? We give up. Elijah gave up. And God says, <laughs> God said, get up. He said, get up. You remember in Joshua? In Joshua uh, 17, Joshua was so upset about the defeat that Israel uh, had experienced because of uh, the defeat of, the, of, of, of I, A-I. And he had a pity party, and God said, Get up. Why do you lay around on your face? Joshua, when you study that, Joshua laid that around for a day, and God said, Get up. God told Elijah, Get up. Samuel mourned over the failure of Saul as king. What did God say to him? In 1 Samuel 16, 1, the Bible says, God said, how long will you mourn for Saul? He's talking to Samuel. Listen, it's God's word. He says, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. Don't give up. Get up. 
get up. Get up. God has called us to go. Samuel, by the way, P.S., he had a new message for Samuel. Samuel got up and went and anointed David as king of Israel. Have you ever had, I'm just, uh, I'm a, have you ever had anybody, I'm going to try to do this. Have you ever had anybody say something to you, just, uh, maybe it's an employee, I don't know. But have you ever been sitting there, you've been talking to someone, and they share something with you, and you're like, oh my gosh, you just shared that with me? And this is your look. You can't get, can I get a witness? I mean, it's just, it's just something weird, or you can't believe it was that personal and they shared it, or just something. And you didn't know what to say. You didn't know how to react. You were thinking, no matter the situation, you were thinking of, I sure wish I had a scripture for right now. But I have spiritual amnesia of everything that God said. I sure wish I had a word of advice right now. I ain't got anything. And you just sat there. God always, always knows what to say to us when we're in the positions because of our conditions. Think about it. Has he ever told you wrong? Has he ever lied to you? Has he ever broke a promise? Has he ever led you astray? Has he ever led you down the wrong path? Has he ever carried you down the wrong road and didn't provide? Didn't look out after you? Didn't take care of you? Has he ever done it? He did not look at Elijah, if you allow me. He did not look at Elijah like, I can't believe you just said that. And in the moments, in our caves, in our moments, God has a word. You know, I don't want you to think that I'm knocking Elijah. Because here's why I'm not knocking Elijah. Aren't you glad he still had the strength? And he still had the ear to hear the still small whisper of God. We have to tune. We have to tune. I've shared this before. I'm going to share it again if it's okay with you. You remember the old radios? You turned the dial and it... <coughs> I remember them. And you had to find... We've got to tune in and listen for God in our positions and our conditions. And we'll hear Him. We'll hear Him. I want to go a different way right now that I hadn't planned to. God had a new message for Elijah. God restored. He says, this is my requirement and this is your responsibility. I want you to go in and I want you to anoint two kings and a prophet. He anointed a servant to a king. He anointed a captain of an army. And he anointed a farmer in the field. And then he reminds him. Stay with me for just a moment. I am closing. Then he reminds him. Look at verse 18. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. I think that's so interesting in a couple ways. God, in his love, in his mercy 
and in his grace gave Elijah the strength by sharing with him, Elijah, your ministry is not a failure. There are 7,000 of you. You didn't fail. Elijah said, I'd fail. Elijah said he'd failed. As the fathers before me, and gosh knows there's so much in that right there. That's a generation that seemed to fail another generation, and another one of the responsibilities that we have in our generation is prepared that the next generation is equipped and has what they need to carry on to advance the kingdom of God. And he said, there's 7,000 of you. And this is what I thought was cool. God did not send Elijah to go preach a sermon to the 7,000. God sent Elijah to anoint only three people. Just go and do what I've asked you to do. Go and do... Just... To, I bet a lot. You're not going to go and preach. You're not going to hold a tent revival for the 7,000. I want you to go and be obedient to three people. Bruce Larson wrote a book. This is an illustration. And then the invitation. Aunt Sue if, and Lisa or Thomas, if you'll come. But I want you to listen to me, please, while they're moving. Brother Brian, if you'll cue that picture. Bruce Larson wrote a book, and it's entitled Believe and Belong. And he, he tells how he helps struggling Christians all throughout this book. He says, for many years, and I quote, he says, for many years I worked in New York City and counseled at my office any number of people who were wrestling <clears throat> with the yes or no decision. Often I would suggest they walk with me from my office down to the RCA building on Fifth Avenue. In the entrance of that building, is a gigantic statue of Atlas. Greek God. It's a beautiful, poor, uh, proportionate man who with all his muscle straining is holding the entire world on his shoulders. There he is. I'd show him the most powerful man in the world built to hold up the world. And look, he can barely stand up because of the burden. Now that's one way to live. I'd point out to my companion trying to carry the world on their shoulders. But now, I want you to come across the street with me. And on the other side of Fifth Avenue, and appropriate for today, is St. Patrick's Cathedral. And there behind the high altar is a little boy. He's about eight or nine. There he is. That's the little statue of the boy named Jesus. And with no effort, he's holding the world up in one hand. He says, we have a choice. We can carry the world on our shoulders, or we can say, Lord, I give up doing this. Here, here's my life. Here's my world. Here's, my, here's all of my world. You see, when God is in command, of our lives, there is always hope. Is God in command 
of your life. Is this you? Is this you? In any area, is this you? Now, for the sake of the story, there's a little boy named Jesus that you need to hand it to. Is God in command of your life? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. And, Father, tonight we come to you thanking you for the hope that we can have in you. And, Father, I pray right now during this time of prayer and invitation that, Father, if there's one here tonight that, that doesn't know you, maybe tonight they've realized They're a sinner in need of a Savior. Father, we pray that today be the day of their salvation. <clears throat> Father, maybe there's one here tonight that has give up. And through your spirit and through your word, they've heard you say, get up. Go. And Father, maybe tonight they want to come and Hey, they want to get up out their pew. And they want to come up to the altar and give it all up and give it to you. Father, will you please have your will and way tonight? We ask for your spirit to move, to come down right now in a supernatural way. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for always knowing what to say to us. And Father, thank you for always having a new message for us. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. <coughs> the invitation was tucked in the prayer. Did it speak to you? Our invitation hymn is.